Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number eight of TrackWrestling.com's Blue Chip Recruiting Podcast. I'll be your host, Eric Olanowski, coming at you live from the state of Michigan, fresh off a trip to Kentucky Speedway, where the number five team, Casey Kane, and former Michigan State All-American at heavyweight Mike McClure hosted me, gave me the grand tour of everything NASCAR. So coming off that, that's pretty exciting. Some exciting stuff going on here. Today we have Jordan Decatur, the Ohio State University commit, um, giving us all the background information on why he and his brother committed to Ohio State University. Uh, we get to catch up. He just got back from the Olympic Training Center. Uh, but enough out of that. We'll get into the interview in a little bit. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to go over before we have decommitments, we have transfers, we have commitments. Uh, there's so many places where we can go for this right now. But before we get into that, I'd like to say congratulations to the Hayes Winkle family welcoming Ava Gabrielle Hayes Winkle. So congratulations to the Hayes Winkle family. Hopefully bringing in another wrestler to the world. So congratulations to them. Um, We'll run over to uh, Tyler Graff joining the Southeast RTC. Uh, Montel Marion will be joining the Scarlet Knight Wrestling Club over at Rutgers. So that's going to be a good workout partner for those guys over there in Rutgers. And Rutgers continues to pick up some guys that are going to long run. They are looking down the road for big things as they are doing great things right now. Um, we will jump to transfer Kellen Stout, 197-pounder from Penn State. will be transferring to his hometown of Pitt. So he's moving back. Keith Gavin bringing in some guys. Uh, Kellen Stout, for those that don't know, 12-3 freshman season, 6-6 six and six, um, in his second season. So coming into his third season, doesn't have uh, too great of a resume or too expanded of a resume, but um, – in that Penn State room, you have to think he's training around all those big guys, especially Jake Varner, Kale Sanderson. So he's going to have some experience. Um, Skyler St. John's 165-pounder for Iowa. And you might be recognizing the name St. John's uh, being over at Iowa State. So and that's Derek St. John coaching on the coaching staff. So Skyler will be jumping over. Skyler comes in uh, entering you know, his red shirt year zero and zero freshman season four and two sophomore season five and three so nine and five as he head heads on over to Iowa State. Uh, what else do we have this past week? Uh, the big announcement for Nick Ramo to Arizona State. Uh, he's a four-time Fargo State champ. So Lee Pritz and the coaching staff over there picking up somebody with experience and that's that's something that you want to see there they're building up in the midweights and upperweights and they've done a tremendous job of getting guys um, to come in those middle weights and now they're starting to see those lower weight guys come up so that's Nick Ramo to Arizona State you have Jacob Camacho out of Connecticut a top 100 guy um, he will be heading over to North Carolina State University uh, Joel Shapiro Fargo All-American, Iowa State champion at 165 pounds. He will be heading to Iowa State. So we got a couple of Iowa State. We got a transfer in there. We got a commitment in there. Um, and then the big one, Anthony Cassiope, one of the best big guys in the country, committed to Northwestern, um, flipped. We're going to do – might as well start a segment called Flipped because so many of these guys commit so early, and then it, you, you just – you get to working with other guys or your friends talk you into it, family talks you into it, and you decommit, um, but to each their own. So Anthony Cassiope will be heading to the University of Iowa. Um, and another thing I want to touch on before we jump into the interview with Jordan Decatur is as a wrestling community, we have to stop being so gullible. The Penn State, they're, Penn State not extending Kale Sanderson's contract. So Oregon, is going to start wrestling, uh, start a wrestling program again. And Kale Sanderson has accepted the head coaching position. And we had people out there believing the hype out of that. Uh, I just want to say great job to Jason Bryan out there. Jason Bryan uh, always 
setting things straight. We all knew it wasn't it wasn't right, but and it, it wasn't true. I say we all, but there were some people out there that were believing it. So uh, the one thing I'm questioning if if Kale Sanderson heads on over to Oregon to start up that program, is Ray Higuchi uh, from Japan the Olympic silver medalist? Is yeah, there were rumors that he was coming over to Penn State, and if he did end up at Penn State, will he be transferring to Oregon? We'll have to figure that out. But in all seriousness, as a sport, man, we have to start making sure that we're checking our sources because you see something come out from from Bob the Egg on Twitter and everybody blows it up. Then you have people writing articles and everything like that. But I'm not going to get too much into detail. Um so we're going to jump over to the interview I previously mentioned. It we have uh, Ohio State commit. He one of the most experienced guys on the lower circuit right now. Uh, you've seen him, Fargo. He's a world team member, state champion. I mean, you, you see this guy all over the country. Um, but enough hearing from me. Let's hear from. Ohio State commit Jordan Decatur. And ladies and gentlemen, we'd now like to welcome in world team member, state champion from Ohio and Ohio State commit Jordan Decatur. Jordan, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, let's let, let's start with, I mean, you've been a traveling man, so where, I mean, just from your social media, I know, but let our fans know, where have you been mm -hmm. the past, I mean, however long, the past couple of days? All right, so, yeah, I, I flew to uh, Colorado Springs about a week ago. So, yeah, on Saturday I flew out to Colorado Springs, and, yeah, I got there, and I spent the whole week, just got back yesterday night. Yeah, got back to Ohio. So, yeah, I spent about a whole week there. At the, That's the pretty cool. So yeah. you're you're out training at the Olympic Training Center. Yeah, um, yeah. And who who was out there that you were? Uh, we'll start with the guys that you had the opportunity to be coached by. So who were the coaches out there that were coaching you guys up? Kevin Jackson, Zeke Jones. Uh, you got Coleman Scott. Uh, there was Tom Ryan. There's all these great coaches there. Um, coaching you got Bill Zadick, his brother. Um, the, yeah, there was a bunch of great guys there. It was just, it was awesome. So what what an experience! I, I, yeah. How was that? Just you're looking around the room and you're being coached by Olympians. You're being coached by national exactly you're being right. Yeah. What is that like? Yeah, Kale in there too. It was it was awesome. You just you look around like like you said, and you're like, wow, world champ, world champ, NCAA champ. You know, it the list goes on. So, you know, just numerous, numerous accomplishments by each one of those guys and uh, it, it was awesome to be able to see different um just different techniques different type of uh, ways that people you know score and uh just different mindsets from all these different guys and um yeah it was mind-blowing to you know just hear from all these guys who um accomplished all these things that uh, everyone in the room would like to you know accomplish so. so we talked about the coaches. What about the wrestlers? Who did you have an opportunity to work out with while you were there? Um, I drilled a lot with with Nathan Tomasello and Logan Stever. And then the guys on the world team I got to roll with were, were like Kurt McHenry, Julian Tag, uh, Ja'Cory Teamer, and then like a, a few other senior guys, senior little guys that I got to roll around with. So like uh, I kind of got to roll around with like JV um, and then – I wanted to go with Dayton, but he had to. He left like a few days before we started going live and things like that. So it was like, I don't know. It, the, the person you went with in the beginning of the day was the guy who you were going with like the entire day. So yeah, those were mainly the guys who I rolled around with. Coleman Scott, I got to roll with him a little bit too. Um, yeah, it was it was awesome. That's pretty cool. And I know, like, when I saw I saw a picture earlier today of Thomas Gilman, Tom Brands. Um, and it was Jason off, if, if I recall right. So yes, yeah, uh, guys yeah. know that the coaches know. So we'll say Coleman Scott knows, for example, you're going to Ohio State. You're going to be coached by Tom Ryan. Those yeah, guys, yeah. are they still open to coaching you and helping you improve? Because, I mean, at oh, the end of the day, sure. what we're looking for and what you're yeah. looking for are world mm -hmm. medals. Exactly, so, yes. 
What's that like? Yeah, yeah. They they didn't bother, like they didn't hesitate at all. They all they all came over to me, helping me with open arms. Um, a lot of them. They just you know, I like the list that I, I named. You know, they they didn't they didn't hesitate at all. They all came to me, and they all even though I'm already thin, you know, they all were friendly. They all um, coached me and taught me different things. You know, like yeah, it was it, it was it was definitely shocking to me i thought it was going to be you know just me and um you know the world team coaches coaching me and then just tom was going to be there like him coaching me a little bit but yeah they they all they all chimed in and they all um were able to you know get some words out to me and from your point of view you felt Mm -hmm. fully confident and just going up to anyone saying hey i i have a question here on this single can you come help me or you no hesitation Mm -hmm. from your part yes Yes, everyone, everyone there is, you know, they're they're training or coaching for you know greatness. So it didn't it didn't matter to them uh, if I wasn't going to school for them or you know if I was getting coached by another coach. They just they all they all were um, very friendly and um, you know I was I felt very comfortable coming up to them and um, asking them what was going on with this or how to do this right and. This and that, you know, they, they, most of them, I didn't even come up to ask. They came up to me willingly without, you know, even, without even, you know, hesitating to it. So, yeah, it was, it was really cool to see that. That's awesome to hear. Um, who were, so you, you're growing up, and who was one guy that you looked up to that you said, I'm going to mimic my wrestling around this guy? I mean, maybe if you and your brother are rolling around, mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. being him, or so who, who was that person? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I had, pretty much like two it was definitely um you know harry lester he went to cbca um and jordan oliver i always loved watching him wrestle other than when he wrestled logan in ncaa's i always loved him <laughs> watching him wrestle so you know it was it was always one of those two growing up <laughs> have you so, had an opportunity yeah. to meet either of those guys yes yeah both of them uh harry who obviously went to cbca i get to see him often very often and he he rolls around with me and helps me out with some stuff. And then Jordan Oliver, I met him not this year at the OTC, but I went a few years back and uh, I got to meet him there. And ever since, we've been, you know, in contact every once in a while. And yeah, he's he's awesome to see Russell. I, I try to mimic him a lot more than anyone else. You know, he's real slick, real light on his feet. So yeah. And so you've been twice to the Olympic Training Center. Yeah, yeah, yep, twice. So and it, how do you feel that that's benefited your wrestling? I mean, you've said just from a mental standpoint, you're getting mm-hmm. different takes from all these different coaches, but how have you benefited from that? It's, you, you come there and, you know, you see all these guys here, you get exposure to greatness. And, like, I don't know, that's something I've always wanted, wanted to be around. You know, I'm, I'm in this room, in this atmosphere. You know, the, the intensity level is beyond what you can even imagine, you know. You go there and uh, you're working out and you're in there. You're, you're talking to JB like any, you know, any other conversation. He's in there pushing you during workouts, telling you work harder, work harder. You got this, or you know things like that. Just like you get encouragement from all these guys. It's it's something you know you've never even thought about until you go there and you're working out and you know you got coaches all around you like Kale, uh, Zeke Jones. You got Coleman Scott. You got Thomas Gilman over here wrestling with you. Like it's it's crazy just being around all these guys who all, um, you know, have accolades that you couldn't even see, you know? So it's, it's definitely, it's definitely improved my wrestling, improved my mindset of wrestling. And, um, I, I feel real comfortable around all these, you know, tough guys who, um, who have achieved things that I would like to achieve. And we're talking with state champion from Ohio and Ohio state commit Jordan Decatur. TrackWrestling.com's Blue Chip Recruiting Podcast. Jordan, you commit to Ohio State in, I believe it was November. Um, yeah, yeah, yep. It was the day before, uh, day before Thanksgiving. So before that, let's let's start out with. Um, I had previously previously mentioned you and your brother working out, mm-hmm. growing up. Your brother also a state champion from Ohio, a little yeah. a lighter guy. Also yep. committed to the Ohio State, but before we yeah. get into that, um, what were your was it was it a package deal? Did you guys know, hey, we're going together? Yeah, as we were when we were really young, I think. All right, so yeah, when we were really young, 
we did a lot of different sports, wrestling, football, track, lacrosse, uh, soccer, basketball, you know, it was a bunch of different sports. We were just always active and it didn't matter, you know, like what we were doing, but we planned to go together. So, um, yeah, we, you know, as we get more and more success in, uh, wrestling, we start to, you know, get a little, few college looks and everything like that. And our dream school was always, it was, always was Ohio State. You know, we always talked about, like, it would be sweet to, you know, put on that singlet, put on the jersey, you know. We love we loved Ohio State football. And so, um, you know, as time goes by, we become freshmen in high school, and, you know, we're getting better and better. And eventually, you know, we get this option, like, okay, you can possibly go to Ohio State, you know. And, um, yeah, at first, Jacob, he didn't really want to go to college for wrestling. Believe it or not, you know, as good as he was, he didn't want to go. And, um, you know, I just kept talking to him, kept talking to him, like, dude, you know, you got you got a God gift, like, you got a God given talent right there. You can't waste that, you know. Eventually, kind of got in his head, like, oh, yeah, you know, I should probably do it. And so, um, eventually, he, um, he believed that, yeah, he, he could be a college wrestler, and, you know, time came, and sure enough, one of the first schools I talked to, Ohio State, you know. And, um, yeah, it was a package deal. You know, I was like, I'm not going if he's not going. <laughs> so, yeah, um, well, we're going to be teammates at Ohio State and uh, roommates as well. <laughs> so was there – were there any other schools that were reaching out to you? I know um, around the area you look at the Big Ten schools. Uh, yeah. And there's countless of them, and you yeah, guys are yeah. in the prime of wrestling in Ohio. Mm-hmm. So what other schools contacted you? Um, I, I loved uh, Penn State. I loved North Carolina and Arizona State. They were all really uh, my interest. Same with Michigan and uh, Oklahoma State. So those are like my like top five, top six. You know, <laughs> we're all perennial powerhouses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I definitely enjoyed uh, watching all the wrestlers there, and I enjoyed the atmosphere there. Um, I guess it would have been cool to, uh, you know, wait a little bit, maybe get a few visits in at those type, you know, those schools. But, yeah, I just felt, you know, I felt like Ohio State was definitely the um, top option. And I felt that uh, maybe me, you know, me and Jacob, Jacob and I uh, committing then would, you know, set a chain reaction for other, uh, you know, juniors now to start committing or other uh, juniors who, you know, or seniors who even enjoyed Ohio State, like they could be like, oh yeah, the Decatur twins are going there. We could potentially, you know, be great and you know also go to Ohio State. So I felt like it was it was more of um, you know comfort for us. We felt yeah real real comfortable there. So um, it was yeah I think it was a smart decision. Um, I don't know. I just I've been still you know talking to like other like college coaches who come up to me and it's, it's pretty cool. But you know I don't know. I just I feel comfortable there for the most part with all the wrestlers, all the coaches. They all um, show a lot of love to me. So, yeah, I appreciate that from them. And you're – are you looking right now, you're around that 125-pound area. Are you yes, yeah. staying at 25? Are you hoping to stay at 25? Are you looking uh, at 33, 41? Because, I mean, you're still young, so you're going to continue. Right, to right. Exactly. That's, that's, that's where I, I'm, you know, kind of hesitant. Because I'm I'm still young, you know, I still got time to grow, I got still still time to learn and everything like that. So, um I think ideally I'll probably be a thirty three pounder. Because yeah, I don't know I'm, But then again I'm real short. I'm real short, so I feel like twenty five they're they're gonna mold me into a twenty five pounder. And if they do, I, I have no problem with that. But I'm weighing around like thirty four, thirty five right now, so probably a thirty three pounder, I'll get bigger when I start lifting stuff in college. So, yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, and I'm probably ready to fill those footsteps. I mean, for I, you, you talk about so. ABCA and yeah. the the Nathan Tomasello, exactly, the track yeah. to Ohio State. I mean, are you ready mm-hmm. to step in? <laughs> those yeah, are big shoes. Definitely to fill. big shoes. Yeah, definitely big shoes. Um, I don't know. I just, I've been trying to, instead of, you know, like train, train my physically, like I'm trying to train mentally for. You know, questions like this, where you know, am I ready? I think I think I am ready. Um, more and more, I'm training with better guys. The, the better I get, so um, I I think this summer I'll, I'll make big leaps. Um, with training with guys at the Olympic Training Center and all these um, you know, great athletes and um, training internationally. So yeah, it, 
I think I'll be ready by the time I'm a freshman. You know, I haven't talked to Coach Ryan or Coach Jaggers about um, redshirting or anything like that. But like, uh, I think I think I'll be ready as soon as I step in that room. You know, it'll be it'll be awesome. But then again, you know, there's Jacob, who's, who's real small, and he'll definitely be a a four year one twenty five pounder. So depends on you know how me and him are working things out. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> And there was two things that you said there, leaps and mentality. Uh, so you, yes. we touched that you commit in November, December, I think was the time frame when the Ironman was going on. You go yeah. into the Ironman, you're the three seed, um, and yeah. you end up dropping a couple of matches. Obviously, yeah. it's not what you expected. Um, and I know right. that uh, uh, just – following you on social media, knowing that I, there was one post that you did in particular that, you know, you, I think you said fifth wasn't you know, what I wanted, uh, but I'm going to learn from this mentally and mm-hmm. physically. I'm going to get better mm-hmm. from this. What did you learn yeah. from that? Because you just commit. You're one of the top right, guys right. in the country. Fifth place yeah. is obviously not what you wanted. What did you learn? Right, right. So, yeah, like going into Ironman, I was talking to my coach and everything, and they're like, you know, 26, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of weight you're giving up. You're real small at 26. I mean, you could cut to 20, and that would that would be a tough cut. So I'm I'm in a I'm in between 20 and 26. You know, I'm a, I'm probably weighing around 33, 32 around there. So yeah, if I go 20, it's it's a lot of weight I'm giving up. If I go 26, I'm gonna be pretty small. You know, so I I'm like all right, you know, I'll, I'll wrestle the best guys. I wrestle wrestle 26. I wrestle bigger guys, the better guys. You know, so I go 26. Yeah, like you said, I come in as the third seed. I'm I'm confident. I'm coming in hot right off of, you know, who's number one and everything like that. And, you know, I drop. I drop in the semis with Joey Silva. And uh, Previously, I you know, like right before Iron Man, I think in the summer I wrestled Silva and I, I beat him then. So I was, you know, I was coming in the match thinking I was going to get Spencer Lee, you know, in the finals and everything like that. And like you said, yeah, I dropped. And I lost it, you know. Like I was – all I was so high after she was number one, being number one in the country and everything like that. And after that loss, I had to, you know, um, re go like I had to go through my uh, my goals again in my head, and I had to uh, I had to rethink everything. You know, my training, my you know how I'm eating, my nutrition, all that. I had to you know just wipe that all out and you know go over it again because my whole mindset after after Iron Man, I, I was you know I was my mind. I was telling everyone like, oh yeah, I'm good, I'm good. It's just a few losses I took, but then I start hearing all these things about other people saying like, "Oh, surprise!" You know, you carried a loss all over social media, Twitter, and Instagram. I got people, you know, saying things about the cater, you know, and I, I didn't like that. <laughs> so uh, I had, I just, you know, I just went to my coaches. Uh, they showed love to me. I showed love to them, and they said, you know, you, screw what everyone else says. It's just between you and you. You know, the only person, only person you you have to. Uh, compete the most against yourself so I, I had to I had to rethink some things I had to um you know change up my uh my my training and um my my mindset so that's what I did and um I bounced back you know a little bit and uh yeah I felt like I felt like Ironman was probably the biggest tournament this year even though I didn't you know compete the, the way I wanted to I think that was the biggest tournament of the year you know because I had to rethink everything and you talked about leaps, and I was, um, I was actually in Ohio at the in Cincinnati, um, uh-huh. and I'm, I was walking around Cincinnati, and I was thinking about this interview, and I was saying, you know, when did he really come onto the scene? And I, I started thinking a couple years back to Fargo, and you were known around the country, mm-hmm. but you were, you know, I mean, there's those elite guys and then those go- that, the guys that have the ability to jump up to that elite level. Right, yeah. And I feel like mm-hmm. a couple years ago in Fargo is where you really solidified your name from those guys yeah. that can be elite to elite. So yeah. talking about Thank leaps, you. what did you do? And I mean, how did you get to that next level? Because I felt like after that Fargo, you really took your wrestling to another level. So what was mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. I, I started wrestling with other guys, you know, I, I started going to other coaches and I started to actually love training. Like before I was just, you know, the little kid from Akron, just, you know, trying to do a little something wrestling. And then once I realized like, okay, I could be kind of good in this, like freestyle stuff. I started going to uh, Todd Haverdale, um, started working with him and um, Stevie Mischief and Dave Bergen. They all started telling me all these things like, oh yeah, you know, you, you could actually be really good in this. So I started like, you know, training with these guys, Ty Mitch and um 
I just started, you know, to love to train. I started to love the, the, the hard work and all the, uh, you know, the dedication that you have to put in to the sport. And I think that's what really set me apart from being good to being, you know, great. So I think like, yeah, going into Fargo, my, was what was that? My eighth grade summer? Was that it? it was, yeah, no, it was, my, yeah, yeah, my ninth grade summer. Yep. When I was going in the ninth grade, yeah. I was like, I went in and I was this real small guy <laughs> and I, I went 106 and, uh, I don't know, the whole atmosphere of, like, freestyle, that was, like, that was, that was my first year wrestling freestyle. The whole atmosphere of wrestling it, I was just like, geez, this is this is fun. You know, I like this fast pace, just pretty much neutral wrestling, you know, and I, I took it and uh, I learned from it, and I went in there and I, I, I made a pretty big boom there, and I ended up winning it, you know, and from that point on, like, after I won it, that feeling that I had from winning Fargo was probably the greatest, like, my first year, that's probably the greatest feeling I ever felt wrestling you know because I felt on top again you know and it was that was pretty much when I got that in my head where I could definitely be one of the best wrestlers you know so so I'm gonna have a couple of questions for you and these are kind of off the beat beaten path okay. I want to know Jordan Decatur have you ever used the dog face filter on snapchat of course. <laughs> Who doesn't, you know? I'm always All on right. Snapchat, you know? <laughs> so that's number one. Ha- number two, have you ever bought an article of clothing or shoes just to be flying? You go out at night and maybe you're heading out with a couple of friends, and uh, you say, then you think about it, you say, man, I don't I don't know if I really want this. And then you put the tags back on, bring the receipt back, and bring yeah, it back. Yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah, you go to Paxton, H&M. <laughs> You find something nice, you know, you try it on, you're like, dang, that's, that's a nice fit. And then you go out and you're like, dang, like, you know, I noticed this. Like, it's a little too baggy around my waist. And then right. I'm like, ah. <laughs> you start <laughs> I to see pictures that, and you, you say, know? man, yeah. I'm not as fresh as I thought. That definitely happened. I think I did that a few weeks ago, actually. Yeah, All right. <laughs> yeah. And have you, last one, I'm going to leave you with this. Have you ever purchased one of those, uh, you know how Coca-Cola has the uh, crazy names? The names? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've never found my name actually. Like Jordan's a pretty common name, but I've never found my name. So I like oh, I always try to find like these weird names. Like I think the last one I got, my name was like Juan or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I've never found my name, but I always like try to find some weird names. All right, so I got three things yeah. to take from that. Pax on H and M. Watch out for Jordan Decatur and Coca Cola. <laughs> make his name. <laughs> right. Yeah. Make my name. So that's all I have for you. Um, yeah. Tables open for you here. Let our our fans, your fans, let everybody know. Let the wrestling world know where they can follow you on social media. All right, um, Instagram zero air jordy zero, um, and Twitter. Uh, I think it's just might be just Jordan Decatur. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and then add me on Snapchat, Jordan Decatur as well. No spaces. And where can add they watch guys, you? Know? you know, got a lot of videos on flow and track. And um, you'll see me next at Worlds, hoping to get a gold medal there. All right. So for everybody here at Track Wrestling, that's been it for episode number eight of TrackWrestling.com's Blue Chip Recruiting Podcast. I've been Eric Olanowski. Make sure you go to Track Wrestling. Um, Track Wrestling, anywhere, go to it. <laughs> anywhere you have social media accounts, make sure you follow at Track Wrestling. That's been it for episode number eight. Thank you guys very much for listening. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.